Wilhelm Christian Weidling October 5, 1808 to January 25, 1871, was a German-born tailor, inventor, and radical political activist. Weidling gained fame in Europe as a social theorist before emigrating to the United States. In addition to his extensive political writing, Weidling was a successful inventor of attachments for commercial sewing machines, including devices for double stitching and the creation of button holes. Biography Early years Wilhelm Christian Weidling was born in Magdeburg, Prussia, the son of Christiane Weidling and Guillaume Terrihan. Weidling's father was a young French officer who was billeted in occupied Prussia, who met and fell in love with Weidling's mother, a household maid. His parents never married, with his father dying in the ill-fated 1812 French invasion of Russia, Weidling was raised in dire poverty, frequently in the care of others while his mother eked out a meager living as a maid and cook. His formal education was minimal, limited to elementary study in the public school of Magdeburg and such reading as he was able to do on his own at the local library. He was raised as a Roman Catholic through the age of 12, and read the Bible attentively, retaining an ability to quote scripture throughout his life. In keeping with the dual ethnicity of his birth, Weidling was bilingual in French and German, learning English as well as the basics of Italian later in his life. Weidling was apprenticed to a tailor at an early age, living with his master and learning the skill of tailoring garments for women and men thoroughly. He became a journeyman at the age of 18, leaving his hometown to travel across the German states in search of employment. He landed in the city of Leipzig in 1830, where he began to take an interest in politics and to try his hand at the writing of satirical poetry. He made his way to Dresden in the fall of 1832 and from there to Vienna in 1834, where he worked fabricating artificial flowers and decorations for women's clothing. In the fall of 1837, Weidling emigrated to Paris, a city which he had briefly visited two years before. He would remain there for four years, becoming deeply involved in the radical political ideas of the day, in particular the writings of Fourier, Owen and Cabot. Topic. Political activity After joining the League of the Just in 1837, Weidling joined Parisian workers in protests and street battles in 1839. Tristram Hunt called his doctrine a highly emotional mix of Babouvist communism, Chiliastic Christianity, and millenarian populism." In conformity with the work of the Christian radical Felicité de Laminis, Weidling urged installing communism by physical force with the help of a 40,000-strong army of ex-convicts. A prelapsarian community of goods, fellowship, and societal harmony would then ensue, directed by Weidling himself. While Marx and Engels struggled with the intricacies of industrial capitalism and modern modes of production, Weidling revived the apocalyptic politics of the 16th-century Munster Anabaptists and their gory attempts to usher in the Second Coming. Much to Marx and Engels's annoyance, Weidling's giddy blend of evangelism and protocommunism attracted thousands of dedicated disciples across the continent. In 1838, he published his first work, Die Menschheit, Wie sei ist und wie sei sein Solt The Human Race as it is, and as it should be, which was translated into Hungarian and other languages. In 1841, after the abortive rebellion of the Blanquists, he went to Switzerland, visiting Geneva, Vevey and Langenthal in the canton of Bern, and finally settling in Zurich in 1843. At all these places, he promoted the doctrines of communism with his preaching and publications, including the 1842 work Garantien der Harmonie und Freiheit Guarantees of Harmony and Freedom. Weidling's work Das Evangelium eines Armen Sunders The Poor Sinner's Gospel came out in 1845, but by this time the attention of the Swiss authorities had been attracted. He was arrested and prosecuted for revolutionary agitation, including blasphemy on account of having published a text which depicted Jesus Christ as both a communist and the illegitimate child of Mary. Found guilty, he was given a six-month sentence. On his release, he was deported back to Prussia. He resided for a time in Hamburg, but then left on a journey which took him to London, Treves, Brussels and New York City. In Weidling's 1847 book Gospel of Poor Sinners, he traced communism back to early Christianity. Upon the outbreak of the revolutions of 1848 in Germany, Weidling returned to Germany, preaching his communism to little effect. 
When the revolutions failed in 1849, he returned to New York, thus becoming one of the 48ers. His book Guarantees of Harmony and Freedom was praised by Bruno Bauer, Ludwig Feuerbach, and Mikhail Bakunin, the latter of whom Weidling was to meet in Zurich in 1843. Karl Marx, in an article from 1844, referred to Weidling's work as the vehement and brilliant literary debut of the German workers, although John Spargo suggested that what won from Marx this high-sounding praise was simply the fact that Weidling's appeals were addressed to the workers as a class. Marx himself emphasized Weidling's theoretical and philosophical brilliance, which compared favorably to the more economically inclined English workers and the more practical politically oriented French workers. Topic American years Weidling continued his activism on behalf of communism in the United States. In January 1850, he began the publication of a monthly journal, Die Republik der Arbeiter. By the end of the year, it had a circulation of 4,000. Toward the end of his life he turned from activism to technological and astronomical studies. For seven years, he was register at Castle Garden. He received nine patents for improvements to sewing machines, among which were double stitch, button hole and embroidery attachments. He received a patent for a dress trimming crimper which he had worked on for 17 years, and on his death left several unfinished machines. He participated with the experimental German-American settlement of Communia, Iowa. Weidling died in New York City. A widow and six children survived him. Topic works Die Menschheit, We sei East und We sei Sein Solt 1838-39 German text online guarantees of harmony and freedom Garantien der Harmony und Freiheit, 1842 German text online The Poor Sinner's Gospel Das Evangelium eines Armen Sunders, 1845 Ein Nothra und die Manner der Arbeit und der Sorge, Brief und die Landslut, 1847 Topic See also League of the Just Topic Footnotes Topic Further reading Frederick Converse Clark, a Neglected Socialist, Annals of the American Academy of Political and Social Science, Vol. 5, March 1895, pp. 66–87. Bruce Levine, The Spirit of 1848, German Immigrants, Labor Conflict, and the Coming of the Civil War. Urbana, IL, University of Illinois Press, 1992. Hans Müllerstein, Marx and the Utopian Wilhelm Weidling, Science and Society, Vol. 12, No. 1 Winter 1948, pp. 113-129. Daniel Nagel, von Republikanischen Deutschen zu Deutsch-Amerikanischen Republikanern. Ein Betrag zum Identitätswandel der Deutschen Aktenwirziger in den Vereinigten Staaten 1850-1861. St. Ingbert, 2012. Waltraud Seidel Hopner, Wilhelm Weidling, 1808-1871, Eine politische Biographie. In two volumes. Frankfurt am Main, Germany, Peter Lang, 2014. Waltraud Seidel Hopner, Wilhelm Weidling Leben und politisches Werken. Leipzig, Germany, Rosa Luxemburg Verein, 1993. Karl Wittke, The Utopian Communist, A Biography of Wilhelm Weidling, 19th Century Reformer. Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Louisiana State University Press, 1950. External links Wilhelm Weidling at Marxist Internet Archive Guide to the Wilhelm Weidling Papers held at the New York Public Library